Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, the FAA certified BeachAir King Air 360 and 360ER. Also, the NBAA base becomes V base, and the FAA administrator completes Boeing 737 MAX eval flight. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Kay, your new airborne host. We have a packed episode today, so let's start with some exciting news. Textron Aviation has earned FAA type certificate for its Beechcraft King Air 360 and 360 ER. Textron confirmed the issuance of a type certificate by the FAA for its newest flagship twin turboprop Beechcraft King Air 360 and 360 ER aircraft, paving the way for customer deliveries to commence in the next coming weeks. Announced in August, the Beechcraft King Air 360 demonstrates the company's commitment to ongoing product development, bringing the latest innovations to the legendary aircraft and providing added value for customers. Announced in August, the Beechcraft King Air 360 demonstrates the company's commitment to ongoing product development, bringing the latest innovations to the legendary aircraft and providing added value for customers. Among the key features of the King Air 360 cockpit is the addition of the innovative solutions and support thrust sense auto throttle. The auto throttle automatically manages engine power from the takeoff roll through the climb, cruise descent, cruise and go around phases of flight. This enhancement reduces pilot workload and supports them in their vigilance to prevent overspeed or underspeed, over temp and over torque conditions. Another important update to keep in mind in the cockpit is the new digital pressurization controller, which automatically schedules cabin pressurization during the both the climb and descent, reducing pilot workload and increasing overall passenger comfort. The pressurization gauges have been integrated with the Collins Aerospace Proline Fusion Flight Deck. The Beechcraft King Air is so popular that since 1964, nearly 7,600 have been delivered to customers around the world. Coming up after the break, Canada's National Research Council tests drones against aircrafts. Introducing the new ELT-345 from Artex. This emergency locator transmitter, or ELT, boasts an industry low price, while providing the same quality and performance on which the Artex brand was built. GPS data is embedded within the first emergency transmission and provides search and rescue personnel with the aircraft location within 100 meters in less than a minute. Take to the skies knowing that you have the highest performing and reliable equipment on board. View our selection of ELTs and safety products at www.artex.com. Artex, your best last chance. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. We spent days flying and burning fuel and experiencing the new Swift fuel. I'm pretty dang impressed. I mean, to come out with a high octane replacement fuel with no lead, that's a tall order. If they continue to go the way they're going, Swift Fuel will have a replacement fuel of the market. It's better for the environment. It's cleaner on your engine. That's game changer. Welcome back. With so much going on in the aviation industry nowadays, we're going to give you a quick rundown of some of the top stories you don't want to miss in this segment called Around the Patch. Canada's National Research Council is not only slamming birds against aircrafts, they're testing the impacts of drone collisions. Canada's NRC has been busy looking into the potential hazards created when a drone collides with an aircraft. A recently published report further documents that issue. The NRC Aerospace Research Center has been performing bird impact testing both on aircraft structures, windshields, as well on engines since the 1960s. Over that period, NRC bird guns were used to fire real birds, 
gelatin synthetic birds as well as steel balls. The later test aimed at certifying a bulletproof windshield of a fighter aircraft with a firing ball velocity of 1.036 Mach or 668 knots. Drones can do much more than spy on your neighbors. The Small UAV Coalition has started a new initiative, Drones for Good, which is all about saving lives and helping communities respond to public health crises and natural disasters. During the COVID-19 pandemic, drone operators and health professionals look to drones for their unique ability to deliver medical and other critical supplies while reducing human contact and helping during hurricanes and floods. Now this is some exciting news. Astronauts are testing the new generation of outer space toilet. A Cygnus resupply spacecraft launched to the International Space Station with nearly 8,000 pounds of scientific investigations, technology demonstrations, commercial products, and other cargo after launching on Friday from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility on Wallops Island, Virginia. The Antares rocket arrived at the space station last Monday, and since then, astronauts have been testing out a new toilet. The smaller footprint will make it possible to increase the number of crew members aboard the International Space Station, as well as planning future exploration missions. Emirates in hot water after operating flights in FAA-prohibited airspace. DOT fined Emirates about $400,000 for operating flights carrying the JetBlue Airways code in airspace in which the FAA prohibited U.S. operations from flying. The airline was ordered to cease and desist from future similar violations. An investigation by the Department's Office of Aviation Consumer Protection found that for 19 days in July of 2019, Emirates operated flights carrying the B-6 code over parts of Iranian airspace despite the FAA issuing a notice to airmen prohibiting U.S. airmen and operators from flying in that region. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now, let's return to the rest of the news. NBAA base becomes a V-base. Like many others shut out of real-life convention efforts, NBAA announced their first ever online business aviation trade show. The Virtual Business Aviation Convention and Exhibition is scheduled for December 2nd and 3rd. The big question is whether they can build an online experience that exceeds guest expectations, something that will be very hard to do. The two-day event is free for members and will incorporate many of the traditional elements of the NBAA's live events, including virtual exhibit booths, keynote speakers, product demonstrations, education sessions, and more. With the event, exhibitors can engage with virtual showgoers, network with visitors at their booths, and exchange contact and other real-time information. Attendees will be able to connect strategically with companies by product category and other quick search criteria. Networking is also possible with subject matter lounges. Hopefully, they have alcohol in those lounges. Each day of the show will include keynote speakers from the aviation community and beyond. VBase will also feature a host of educational sessions on industry topics, like issues facing the entrants coming into the marketplace. After these messages, the FAA administrator completes the Boeing 737 MAX eval flight. If it looks good, it usually flies good. The Bristel series of aircraft is proof of that. Furthering their legacy of safety and efficiency, Bristel is proud to feature the Rotax 915 IS Turbo in the current lineup of aircraft. The 915 IS Turbo power plant offers more power than ever before in a light sport aircraft. Learn more about Bristel at www.sportflyingusa.com. Well, hello, fellow pilot. I'm John King. And I'm Martha King. You know, we've all had our flying lives disrupted lately. Well, King Schools is here to help you stay up to date with courses that you can access on your desktop, iPad, or iPhone. If you'd like a refresher or just want to expand your aviation horizons, we have a course for you. So head over to kingschools.com slant rusty today for details.
Welcome back. The FAA Administrator completes the Boeing 737 MAX eval flight. FAA boss Steve Dixon fulfilled his promise recently to pilot the Boeing 737 MAX before the Federal Aviation Administration approves the aircraft's return to service. Dixon's flight took about two hours and included a number of scenarios to demonstrate the proposed software and design changes to the aircraft's automatic flight control system. Dixon, along with the FAA Deputy Administrator Dan Eltwell, completed the new recommended pilot training for the aircraft. Dixon's flight is an important milestone. A number of key steps remain in the FAA's evaluation of Boeing's proposed changes to the aircraft's flight control system and training. The FAA will not speculate about how long it will take until the aircraft is returned to passenger service. The FAA notes again that, quote, as we have stated throughout our work on the 737 MAX, the agency is following a deliberate process and will take the time it needs to thoroughly review Boeing work. We will lift the grounding order only after FAA safety experts are satisfied that the aircraft meets certification standards. Their actions are only applicable to U.S. air carriers and U.S. registered aircrafts. While FAA processes will inform the civil aviation authorities, they must take their own actions to return the Boeing 737 MAX to service to their air carriers. The FAA will ensure that international counterparts have all necessary information to make a timely, safety-focused decision. And that does it for our show today. Thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kimberly Kay. As a reminder, Airborne Unlimited is currently operating on our winter programming schedule. If you have a story suggestion for Airborne Unlimited or any of our shows, or just want to say hi, please send us an email at jim at aeronews.net. See you next time.